Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jupiter James and this is Astro Motivation where I awaken the astrologer within you and aim to give you a little inspiration and motivation per your unique placement within your birth chart. You know, I really do feel that before a time of iPhones and iPads and I this and I that, we were a culture and a society that were better able to look up at the stars and understand exactly where our dreams were and how to get them. And so if that sounds good to you, let's go ahead and get into it. Today I'm excited to bring you guys a very cool and interesting topic of stelliums within the birth charts. Now, I know you may have heard of the word stellium before and it may sound very esoteric and fancy and what that arrow esoteric and fancy word is, is just a fancy word for a cluster of planets, right, within your birth chart houses, okay? So if you were to pull out your birth chart right now, you were to see more than three planets, three or more planets within your birth chart, right, that would be considered a stellium. Now, I like to be someone that says if you have two planets plus an asteroid plus a point plus a vertex plus a north node in my humble opinion that will give the same energy as a stellium okay so i know there's a bunch of debate whether it's two or more or three or more in my opinion if there's two planets in a house plus an asteroid plus a you know or a asteroid or a point then that is considered a stellium or if there are three or more planets within the birth chart, then it is a stellium in that house, okay? So go ahead and pull out your birth chart and see if there are any stelliums in your birth chart, all right? Now, what are stelliums? Stelliums are a cluster of planets within your birth chart houses, all right? And what is it? what it indicates for me as an astrologer is just a concentration of energy where the universe is really putting a lot of stock in, where it really wants you to focus on. Whenever I see a stellium in a person's birth chart, I say that this is going to be an area of importance that the person is going to need to learn to navigate through and take importance within because if not, things may go you know, awry or they may not get the things they want because it's going to be through this area of their life that when they focus and put energy within in, that they are able to find fruits within, okay? I also say that when you have a stellium in the birth chart, that this is where the universe is putting a lot of tools in the toolbox. I like to consider each planet within your birth chart akin to tools in a sandbox, right? We are all given the same nine tools within our sandbox called life, and what we do with these tools, right, we can either build a sandcastle or we can dig a ditch, right? I like to play around in my mind and think of it like that, right? So when you have a stellium in a certain area of your life, the universe has said, I want you to use these tools, right? These planets, these energies in this specific area of life only. I want you to dibble and dabble and see if you can create your mountain and your castle in this area of your life, all right? So depending on what house, what sign your stelliums are in will result in what you will be experiencing in your life and what the universe wants from you and where, you know, that beacon of light or that big neon sign is saying, hey, focus over here on what it is about. So within this video, I'm gonna go ahead and go through house by house and sign by sign on what you could be experiencing if you have your stellium in certain houses and certain signs, okay? So while you have your birth chart in front of you, go ahead and take note of the sign that your stellium is in and then go ahead and take note of the house that your stellium is in and go ahead and find the respective timestamp within this video right and click the appropriate timestamps as to what fits your stelliums all right you should be watching two timestamps in total right if you are looking at a whole sign chart and maybe four timestamps in total if you're looking at a plastics chart all right which would be a little bit more comprehensive okay so if you're ready without further ado let's go ahead and get into it if you have a stellium in the first house or in aries this is going to be very very powerful energy okay this is going to be all about the energy of honing who you are whenever i see a stellium in the first house or in aries i say the spotlight is on you okay the focus is on you this is highly selfish energy not in a bad way this is highly um you 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 energy this is highly initiative energy the universe is putting all those tools 
in your first house or Aries basket because it wants you to take initiative. It wants you to have the power, the courage, the bravery to go after what it is that you want to go after in your life, okay? So a lot of the things in your life are going to be urging you and pushing you to stand up for yourself, to go after the things that you want, to consider you first and put yourself first. And that's why I say selfish energy, because this is the healthy selfish. It's going to be, you're, you're going to be put in situations where you have to focus on you first. The things that you want are going to take priority and take precedent. You know, you may have to, uh, there is a lot of energy within your warlike spirit or your initiative energy, um, a lot of energy just in general that you're going to have to be putting out. But whenever I see stelliums in the first house or in Aries energy, this is all uh, the spotlight is on you. So my first question to you with an Aries stellium is what is it that you want? What do you want in this life? Right. And once you have that thing that you want, what are you willing to do to get it? Are you ready to get up? Go out there. Go get it. Fight for it. Put yourself in positions for it. Tell people, hey, I'm the one for the job. That is what your stellium is trying to get you to do. That is why you have so many planets in Aries or in the first house, okay? So you cannot be shy with this energy. You cannot be afraid of this energy. You cannot back down with this energy. And whenever someone is you know, um, coming toe to toe with you, or you are in an environment where you have to compete because nine times out of 10, if you have a stellium in Aries or in the first house, you're going to have to deal with that level of competition, right? You're going to have to deal with themes of bravery and fighting and battling. You can not back down. Okay. You cannot be scared. All right. So this is why you have all this energy in the, in those energies, in that house, in that planet, well, not in that planet, in that house, in that sign is because the universe is giving you the power. Quite literally, the universe is giving you the power. The song that comes to my mind when I think about a stellium in the Aries or in the first house is, I got the power. Like that song comes to my mind, all right? I want you to play that song every morning, all right? To charge yourself up, to get out there and go after the things that you want in life. Because listen, when you have all of those planets, in the first house, think of the responsibility that you have. The universe is saying that it's up to you. Unless you do it, nothing's gonna get done. The universe ain't gonna do it for you. Chance ain't gonna do it. Your actions are gonna do it for you. Your gumption is going to do it for you, all right? And it is in you utilizing your power of action that you will get everything that you need in this life, okay? So let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know if you've experienced these things within your life. And um, let me know your specific stelliums and what they are because everyone's stellium is different, you know? Some people may have a positive stellium or a, you know, a stellium that they have to do some workerizations in, you know? So let me know what your specific stellium holds, what points, what planets, what um, asteroids are in the makeup of your stellium in the comments below, and I will let you know what it is the universe wants you to do with that stellium, okay? Uh, you have a blessed day, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the second house or in Taurus. This is going to be energy a lot of energy in the themes of your morals, your values, what you value. This is also going to be a lot of energy within your money in life, making money, you know, attaining money, maintaining money. Your stability in life is going to be something that you are going to have to place a lot of focus on and importance within. There's going to be a lot of things that occur within your life that are going to test this area of your life, that are going to require your focus, that are going to need you to hunker down and be someone that takes your money very seriously, that takes your morals and what you value very seriously. There's going to be situations in your life that test what it is that you value, what is where your morals lie, how you are going to be someone that provides stability and money for yourself. This is also going to be the energy of your family roots, you know, what was being pumped into the family as a child or within your upbringing. A lot of the family morals, the family teachings, you know, the, the family upbringing, there's going to be a lot of energy within that as well. So whenever I see someone that has a stellium in Taurus or a stellium in the second house, although this is good energy, right? Because it will indicate that the person could have a lot of um, money or a lot of resources in life or can attain wealth very easily over the course of their life. It's still not going to make it any 
easier, if that makes sense, right? It's still gonna make it somewhat of, there's a lot of energy there for a reason. There's a lot of focus there for a reason. The person's gonna have to take this area of their life very, very seriously. So my first question to you, when I see an Aries, uh, or sorry, when I see a stellium in the second house or in Taurus, right? I ask, what are your morals? What do you value? What's important to you? You know, where does your moral compass lie? And are you expressing those things? Are you standing on that hill for the things that you hold true for yourself and that you value and that you have been taught as a child through the, the family upbringing or through the morals and values of the family? Are you? Because you're gonna be tested in this area, right? There's gonna be things that come in and there people are gonna be asking you for money maybe or you're gonna find it hard to make money or you're gonna find that making money is very important for yourself. You're gonna find that cultivating the things that you find important for yourself become important, right? You are gonna have to look in the mirror and ask yourself, what is important to me? What are the things that I, um, what are my morals and values? Where do they lie? Do they lie here on this? side of the coin or do they lie here on this side of the coin and is believing the thing that I believe in line with how I'm going to sustain myself and make money for myself and provide for myself and be stable and find security for myself okay so let me know if this resonates with you and also let me know what your specific stellium is right because that would add a whole new component and a whole new layer to what your stellium wants from you all right because depending on if you have a positive stellium or a stellium that requires a little bit more work on your part that would let me know what's going on in your life and what beacon of light, what area that the, the universe is pointing for you to focus on so that you can get wealth, so that you can get stability. So let me know what your specific specific stellium is doing within your chart, what consists of that stellium, you know, what different planets, what different asteroids, what different points are within that stellium and I will let you know in the comments below what the universe is saying okay because it's saying something trust me when whenever you've got a stellium it's a point in your chart that you really really need to focus on and nine times out of ten because there are so many planets within that area of your chart within the second and within Taurus a lot of your life will be tied up until you achieve that thing until you do that thing within Taurus until you really master that Taurian energy or that second house energy, you will find that your life is kind of locked up until you do that thing. Also with Taurus energy and second house energy, there will be a lot of focus on the voice, right? Maybe expressing yourself, maybe also doing something within the artistic realms or dealing with finance will also come up in your life. So that's something that a lot of people forget too with Taurus, that it's not always just about money, but it could also lend into the realms of, you know, you expressing yourself, you talking about the things that you learned as a child and what is important to you and what your morals and values are. And then it can also lend into other areas as well, like art, right, and creativity, because it is ruled by Venus after all, right? Um, the second house in Taurus is ruled by Venus after all, okay? so. Again, let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know your specific placements. Take importance in these themes in life and you will find that you prosper in this area of life. You out of anyone is are meant for stability and meant for wealth, but it will require your focus. It will require your grit, okay? It will require your attention and that area of your life will be opened up, all right? You have a blessed day and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in Gemini or the third house. This is going to be a lot of energy and focus on your communication, a lot of focus on your writing, a lot of focus on your expression in life. This is also going to be a lot of energy within dealing with the sibling dynamic and traveling as well. So right now, as I'm saying this, does it ring a bell? Do you find that those things that I've just named take quite importance in your life? You know, the mind is going to be something that you kind of need to focus on, right? Your mind is gonna be something that takes a toll on you or your writing, your voice, your communication, your socialization, putting yourself out there, um, your long distance travels or short distance travels as well, and your siblings. Your siblings are gonna test you, all right? This is gonna be an area of a big, big focus for you. So whenever I see someone with a stellium in Gemini or in the third house, my first question to you is, what is your message? I'm all ears. I'm all ears. I'll let you talk. What is it? Because 
For you, you may have a grand message, right? You may have a lot to say. You may have an idea in your mind that is needed for you to express out into the world because when you do, that is when prosperity and abundance will befall you, okay? So uh, it is very important in this life that you learn to express yourself, that you learn to communicate, that you learn to uh, keep up your mental dexterity, that you are someone that is also maybe dealing with the siblings a lot, may, whether for good or for bad, right? It will depend on the type of stellium that you have and what consists inside of the stellium. But what I do know is that there is going to be a lot of importance on your communication skills, okay? On your writing, on your speaking, on your siblings, okay? So do you have a book that you want to write? Um, do you need to put yourself out there on social media or on the internet? Are you a lawyer and you need to speak, you need to write, you need to communicate very well, right? Very articulately, right? That is what is going to be here and what is being expressed, all right? The, I mean, you don't have to fall into those territories, but someone out there will understand what I mean as far as this, these are the themes that will come up in your life that are going to test you. So nine times out of 10, you will be someone that when you have a stellium in the third house, you don't want to express yourself. You don't want to talk. You don't want to deal with the siblings or you have a lot of drama going on with the siblings. You don't want to travel. You don't want to get out and see anything. You may not trust your intellect or your intellectual ability. You may not feel as smart as other people, but that is why the universe has given you these tools in this area so that you can learn to become someone who is confident in this area of your life, okay? To socialize, to speak, to put their writing out there, to, to express themselves, to get out and travel, to get out and see the world, okay? So um, I know it's a kind of a, a misconception that stelliums make things great, but in actuality, it just shows that there's a, lot of, there's a lot of drama there. There's a lot of energy there, right? And the universe is giving you these tools. I like to kind of pretend that the, the planets are tools in a, in a, in a toolbox. You know, they, these are the toys that we have in a sandbox and we are all given the same nine tools, nine planets to either build a castle or dig a ditch with, right? And so in this area of your life, when it comes to your communication, when it comes to your expressiveness, when it comes to you putting yourself out there, when it comes to you using your intellect and your mind, are you building a castle or are you digging a ditch? with those tools, with that stellium that you've been given in your third house or in Gemini, okay? Um, my biggest, biggest encouragement for you is to say what's on your mind. You're, listen, your throat chakra at the end of the day should be tired. You should be care with a stellium in the third or in Gemini, you should be carrying throat coat tea around with you everywhere, right? Because that would show that you are using the power within your Gemini stellium or within your third house to the, its fullest extent. It, because when you do, because when you do, that is when goodness is going to be opened up in your, in your life. I also say that stelliums, think about it, stelliums are putting a majority of your planets in a certain house. So a lot of your life is going to be kind of locked up until you focus on these areas of your life until you express yourself in this area of your life, right? So for you, I'm encouraging you, a lot of your life will open up should you focus on this area of your life of the third house of Gemini energies, okay? So again, if you got, if you want a podcast, start that podcast. If you want to be a social media influencer, be a social media influencer. If you want to be a writer, be a writer. If you want to be a singer, be a singer, anything that consists of the Gemini realm, of the communication realm, of the, the written or spoken word realm, do it because that is where your prosperity and abundance will be, okay? And that is where your life will open up. It'll be through you doing that and expressing that, okay? So let me know if this resonates with you. Also, let me know what your unique stellium consists of because everyone out there, although you may have a stellium in this area, everyone's stellium will be different, right? You may have a positive stellium with very um, positive and abundant planets, or you may have a little bit more of an unfavorable stellium where there's a, just a little bit more of a workaround, right? So let me know what that stellium holds for you, um, what it consists of, and I will write back in the comments what that blinking neon sign, what, that, what the universe is saying, hey, do this, 
for you, okay? So I will see you on the next video. I am wishing you all the communication energy possible, okay? Express yourself, get out there, travel, speak, write, socialize, and I will see you on the next video, all right? Have a blessed day, bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the fourth house or in Cancer, okay? This is gonna show that for you, there is a lot of domestic energy in your life. There's a lot of energy within home and family and your private life. There's a lot of energy within your inner emotional world. There is a lot of energy within your healing and empathetic and emotional qualities in life, okay? Because we are going into a house that is ruled by cancer. We're going into an energy that is ruled by the moon, okay? And so if you have your stellium in cancer or in the fourth house, this is a lot of energy going on within home, you know, within your respective homes, about where you're gonna live, where you do live, what's going on inside of your house, what happens outside of work in your own personal life. There may be a lot of energy in your personal life outside of work. You may be someone that when you clock out of work, it's almost like when you are out of work, you've got an even bigger full-time job away from work, just dealing with the home, dealing with the family, dealing with the things you gotta do in your private life, right? There may be also a lot of introspection energy that you have, right? Where you feel there's so much energy happening and swirling around within your emotional world that you look up and three days have gone by, right? You look up and you kind of you kind of feel like you can't really put yourself out there or be perceived or go out, right? It, it makes things very introspective. A lot is happening that you need to process on the inside, right? But this also, when you have a stellium in Cancer or a stellium in the fourth house, it also makes for a very nurturing individual. It makes for a very caring individual. Although emotional, it still makes this person quite caring, quite uh, nurturing, quite motherly, quite paternal, right? You will be that person that everyone probably comes to for help, healing, and aid when they need it, all right? And you may be busy taking care of everyone. That's the thing is that outside of work, you come home and Everyone needs you, the dog needs you, your friends need you, your husband needs you, your wife needs you, your kids need you, this one needs you, that one needs you. I mean, and you are pouring all of that nurturing energy out into everyone outside of your own job, right? Outside of what you do professionally. So when you have this stellium in the fourth house or in cancer, I will also encourage just taking care of yourself, but I will say that there is a lot of emotional and nurturing and empathetic energy that you do have that is going to be needed of you, all right? And people are going to need you. They are going to need your healing. They are going to need your care. I see a lot of therapists with this type of stellium. I see a lot of mothers with this stellium. I see a lot of um, psychologists with this stellium. Anyone who is doing something to nurture others or help others or heal others or care for others, they have a stellium in the fourth house or they have a stellium within cancer energy, okay? Mothers have this, okay? People who are would make a good mother or are mothers have a stellium in cancer or in the fourth house, all right? You, again, like I said, this could also be very spiritual energy and very introspective energy and sometimes it can bog you down. Sometimes there could just be so much focus on your inner needs and your inner emotions that you can't peel yourself out of bed or you just want to recluse or you just want to hide, you know, within the comfort of your own home, all right? So I would highly recommend working out. I would highly recommend, you know, if you are a therapist, you go find a therapist, you know? Find ways to fill your cup up. Find more time for you to nurture and care for yourself in the way that you care for everyone else because that is also going to be something that you need to take big importance within. How can you be there for everyone if you're not being there for you, if you're not filling your cup up, right? Take breaks. Take moments of times where you say, look, you guys, my emotional bandwidth is shot. I can't today. I can't. I got to go focus on me. I need to go for a run. I need to go, you know, get my mind right and my life right. And then I'll come back and help heal, protect and nurture you, the family, the job, the this, the that, right? So let me know if this resonates with you. Do, are you someone who is in a caring field? Are you a the endless nurturer that everyone comes to you for help, aid and assistance? It, are, do you go through a roller coaster of emotions in your life? Because with a stellium 
in the fourth or in cancer you very well will especially within the family within the privacy of your own home within your private life there's a lot of energy there's a lot of going around doing this doing that right let me know what your specific stellium consists of right because everyone's stellium is going to be different some people have a more positive and abundant and favorable stellium right with very positive planets in it and then others may have a not so favorable uh, stellium where it's going to present its fair share of challenges um, that open up once they conquer them. So let me know what your unique combination of your stelliums are within your fourth house or within cancer and I will let you know what the universe is telling you to go in the direction of and place importance on in this life, all right? I'm wishing you many, many, many caring times. I'm wishing that you care for yourself like you care for others, all right? I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to nurture yourself. I want you to, you know, go take a nice Epsom salt bubble bath tonight, you know? Do that for yourself. Cut off your phone, cut off, you know, what others need from you and just go take care of yourself today because that is kind of what's needed, all right? Take care of you. What do you want this weekend? What do you want this week? And do that because that is kind of what your stellium wants you to do. It wants a healthy balance of give and take, of you pouring into others and then you pouring into yourself, all right? So you have a beautiful day. I will see you on the next video and um, yeah, bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the fifth house or in Leo. This is gonna be highly, highly show-stopping, glamorous, you know, world stage, star performing energy, attention seeking energy in the best way possible, okay? Um, when you have a stellium in Leo or you have a stellium in the fifth house, this is all about your creativity. This is all about your fun in life, you know? This is all about your personality and putting it out there and being someone that is the life of the party being someone that expresses themselves to the fullest extent, you know, all eyes are on you with this type of placement, all right? Um, but as these things go, I do know that when the universe puts a bunch of planets somewhere, sometimes it's not so easy for the person. Although it may look and appear that way, sometimes it may require a little bit of elbow grease in order for you to put yourself out there. It may require a little bit of some fight and some grit for you to be that show-stopping character that you are meant to be, all right? So you being someone that is also taking importance within your leadership roles, you being someone that puts yourself out there, you diving into love and romance, you being someone that takes center stage and isn't shy is something the universe wants from you. So when people say, oh, you're so extra, I want you to say, good, I'm following my stellium. I'm doing what the universe wants me to do because that is gonna show that you are in alignment, all right? You should be someone that's the loudest in the room. You should be someone that is the most gregarious person in the room. You should be the one that when people walk in, they go, whoa, who is that? And nine times out of 10, if you have a stellium in Leo or in uh, the fifth house, it will be that way, right? But it may make you uncomfortable at times. It may be like, ugh, I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility, right? Depending on the type of stellium you have, right? But there is a lot of importance on this energy in this life, okay? You are not someone in this life when you have a stellium in Leo or in the fifth house who gets to be shy. You are not someone who gets to take the back seat. You are someone who is meant to take the lead. You are meant to be in front of people. You need to be on somebody's camera. You need to be on somebody's stage. You need to be in somebody's way. You need to be be in somebody's face, all right? Showing them who you are and what you got and what you are capable of, all right? Be your biggest, be your brightest, be your boldest. And that is how you are going to get your prosperity and abundance in life. This is how you're gonna find ease and flow in your life. I always say that when you have a stellium, you have to think about it. You are putting the bulk of the nine planets that we already have, nine planets aren't a lot. You're putting the bulk of those planets and of those very, very, um, resourceful energies in one house, right? So this will show that if the bulk of your planet, of your life, of what you can do and what you will do is in one area of your life, it will show that the other areas of your life are going to be locked up until you focus on that fifth house, until you focus on that Leo energy, until you begin to exude those energies, a lot of your life can't move forward because it's like, like I say, you're putting the bulk of the energy in a certain 
energy in life. You're putting the bulk of the planets in a certain house in your life. And so the universe is really saying, look, I ain't giving you nothing. I'm not doing anything until you do this, until you focus on this, right? That is why it is such important energy. That's why a stellium is a stellium, all right? So when you do really put yourself for, for it, when you do really work at it, know that you will be quite so show-stopping. You could be a jack of all trades. You could be multi-talented. You could be someone that gets a quite a deal of attention. You may also be someone who is never alone as far as romance goes, or you need to learn to put yourself out there for romance, right? This is what this would show in your life, okay? So I won't know, of course, what exactly the universe is asking of you with your stellium unless you let me know what your specific stellium is consisting of all right what are your specific stelliums made up of what planets what uh you know points what asteroids make up your stellium all right let me know in the comments below because depending on if you have a favorable stellium or a you know a stellium that challenges you a little bit more it will let me know what the outcomes will be but i know Listen, when you got that Leo stellium, when you got that fifth house stellium, you are going to be challenged in this life to be all you can be. You are going to be challenged in this life to put yourself out there and put who you are and be courageous out there in the world. Your talents, your light, your aura, your essence, it needs to be seen. You need to be seen in this life. And until you are someone that becomes comfortable with that, you will not find ease and flow, all right? And of course, a little fun and a little romance is also in the cards for you as well, all right? So you have a beautiful, blessed day and I will see you on the next video, bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the sixth house or in Virgo. This is gonna place a lot of importance on your health in life, okay? Your work, your service, your productivity in life. You know, from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed at night, what is it that you need to do or that you have to do or are doing, if anything, right? This is going to show that there is going to be a lot of importance placed on your schedules, your routines, your health, your diet, your fitness, and you taking care of those things. You being someone who takes responsibility within those areas of life, okay? Because nine times out of ten, if you have a stellium in this area, you may be someone who resists that energy or doesn't want to work, doesn't want to, you know, keep up a good health routine, doesn't want to take care of their diet and their fitness, you know, but you're going to have to be because when you do, you kind of become a master at it and you kind of find ease and flow in this area of life when you are taking care of your health, your diet, your fitness, your work, and what you do in life as far as your, your work and service, okay? So let me know if this resonates with you. Also, let me know if you are also someone that may have a perfectionist complex at times, okay? You may be someone that feels that unless you are doing things perfectly or are perfect, then you, you shouldn't be doing anything, right? It's like you want everything to be perfect now or not at all, right? It can also up the ante on the anxiety that you may have in life and it may also up the ante on your critical nature, you know, either you being critical of yourself or of others or of both, right? So mind that and watch that because a healthy, person with a Virgo stellium would be someone who is using that critical nature to help others where they are falling short. You know, rather than critiquing them, rather than saying, oh, they're not doing this, they step in and say, hey, I see that you're not quite doing that right. Would you mind my assistance? Let me help you do this a little bit better. Let me show you a better way. And with that, this would make someone who would be a star employee, a star worker, you know. This is the person who's getting employee of the month. When they really hunker down and get serious about their health and what they eat and what they're putting into their bodies and their routines, these are the people who will find more ease and flow and health and vitality in their lives, okay? Which makes for a very successful human, which makes for a very successful and happy person. It will limit the anxiety, it will limit the, crit the critical nature that you may possess within you because you are focusing and channeling that energy in a healthy area of your life, which is your life, which is your productivity, which is your schedule, which is your routine, okay? So let me know if this resonates with you. Are you someone that has noticed that life wants you to work? Life wants you to get up at a certain hour. Life wants you to eat a certain way. Life wants you to 
really take what you do for work very seriously, okay? Because you will find that if you don't do those things, then other areas of your life are locked up or you can't access other areas of your life. Let me know if this is you, okay? Also, let me know um, the specific type of stellium you have. What is the makeup of your stellium? Everyone may have a stellium in the sixth house, right? Who's watching this section of the video, but everyone may not have the same stellium, right? You will have other different unique configurations making up your stellium. So until I know what those are, I can't really direct you in the right direction of what your what the universe is asking of you specifically, right? So let me know what your stellium is, what it's made up of, what different types of planets, what different type of asteroids, what different points make up the stellium, and I will let you know what the universe is asking of you specifically in this life. So with that, I will leave you and I'm going to go ahead and give you all of the healing what is it? Healing, wellness energy, productivity energy, and the energy to get up and help others, aid and assist others, okay? And that will give you success in this life, all right? You have a beautiful, blessed day, and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the seventh house or in Libra. This is going to put a lot of focus and a lot of energy within the themes of life, within your socialization, within your partnerships, within your partnerships with all kind, romance, business, friendship, casual romance, any type of relationship between you and other people. This is what this stellium is going to be about. And so for you, this could show that you have a very robust social life. You could be someone that has a very ro robust partnership life or a very ro robust romantic life. There's a lot of drama going on. There's a lot of activity in your social realms, in your social life. It will also show, depending on the type of stellium and what consists within your stellium, it will also show that you may be someone who may need to learn the importance of socialization, of fairness, of compromise, of tit for tat, of, you know, um, shaking hands and striking the deal, you know, putting yourself out there in the social world, of uh, being someone who takes importance within romance and, you know, uh, saying yes to the party invitation. You're gonna need to be someone who socializes a little bit more, okay? Who finds it important to deal with these things in life because nine times out of 10, depending on the type of stellium and what makes up your stellium, you're either the type of person that is gonna resist you know, going out and socializing and saying yes to the party invitation and putting yourself out there for romance, or you're gonna be on the opposite side of coin of the coin where there's so much importance on this area of your life that every time you look up, you're with somebody. Every time you look up, you're on to the next partner. You are striking a deal with someone else. You are the socialite of the family. You're the socialite of the city. You are someone, who, it could, so it's gonna be on two extremes depending on what your type of stellium holds for you, okay? But I do know, I do know, I like to pretend and say that the universe gives us all the same nine tools. The tools being the planets that make up our birth chart, right? And they are displayed or, you know, spread out through the houses within our birth chart, right? And when the universe gives you tools and puts a concentration of those tools in one area of your life or the majority of those tools in one area of your life, you're going to find that other areas of your life will be lacking because they are dependent on this area of your life. So you're going to find that unless you are someone that is socializing, unless you are someone that is partnering, unless you are someone who is, um, you know, finding compromise between you and other people, unless you are striking the deal, unless you are finding importance in your romantic world, you may find that other areas of your life may not progress. You may find that a lot of the other areas of your life are locked up until you place importance on your relationships and your social world and your romantic world and your business partnerships and things of that nature. So with that, let me know if this resonates with you, okay? Let me know if you are someone that finds that every time you look up, someone's ringing that phone, someone's texting you, someone's saying, hey, come out, or you find that you've gotta be someone that networks, you gotta be someone that uh, is always thinking about love and romance, or you're always in a love and romantic relationship, you're always around friends, you're always having to be that socialite or that social butterfly, let me know if this is you and if you feel that. Um, also, the seventh house, 
and more so Libra energy. This could also lend its energies to law, putting a lot of energy within lawsuits, a lot of energy within the law field. Like if you wanted to be a lawyer, this would be a very good type of stellium to have with it being in Libra or in the seventh house. And it can also lend itself into areas of life like um, creativity and aesthetics and art. Okay, so that is also something that would be very good for you if you wanted to place importance and place focus on those areas of your life. You would, it would benefit you greatly. Okay, so let me know if this resonates with you. Also, let me know what your specific stellium is made up of because depending on your type of stellium, it can uh, give different types of results. You know, some people may have a more favorable stellium where it's easy and abundant and flowing and they get it and it's cool, whereas others may have a not so favorable type of stellium in combination where it requires a little bit more work, a little bit more effort in that area of life. Let me know what your specific combination is in the comments below. That way I will be better able to direct you in what the universe wants you to focus on, all right? So with that, I'm going to leave you with blessing you with all the social energy, with all the partnership making energy, with all the romantic energy, with all the aesthetically pleasing energy, with all the graceful energy, and I will see you on the next video, all right? Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the eighth house or in Scorpio. This is going to be highly, highly intense energy that you will have to deal with over the course of your life. A lot of transformational energy that you're going to have to deal with over the course of your life. A lot of psychological energy that you're going to have to deal with over the course of your life. You may be someone that is dealing heavily or will need to deal with heavily and place importance on the themes of debts taxes, intimate bonds between you and other people, share finances and resources, you know, the money that you may get or that you may owe from other people, um, sex, you know, the occult realms, the psychological realms, and most importantly, your transformations in life. You may find that every time you look up the things that I just mentioned, you're always dealing with them. You're always thinking about them. You're always having to place importance on them or the other areas of your life will not progress forward. You know, whenever you have a stellium in your birth chart, it shows that unless you place importance on that area of your life, because there's such a bulk and such a concentration of energy within that area of your life, the other areas of your life, because they don't have planets in them, are dependent on your focusing of that area of your life. So when you have Scorpio, Stellium, you are here to learn to trust. You're here to learn to let go. You're here to learn to somewhat depend on the resources and the help of other people while still holding your power. Uh, being someone who trusts in the great beyond and also being someone who uses their keen sense. You being someone who uses that sixth sense that you will have because when you have a stellium in Scorpio, you're going to have somewhat of a keen sense. You're going to be able to see beyond the veil a little bit. You're going to be able to see beyond the facade or the face value of what anything is presenting you, a person, place, situation, or thing is presenting you. And it'll be through you using that keen sense that you have, that diving and peering into what is not said and what isn't being shown, that you will be able to get through to solve the problem, all right? So a lot of therapists have this type of placement. A lot of People who are dependent on inheritance have this placement. A lot of people who go through very many transformations in their life go through this. Um, and a lot of people who end up wealthy have this placement, okay? But know that in order to get those things, in order to come out on the other side of this energy unscathed or in a very well-positioned manner in life, you're gonna have to be someone that learns to let go and kind of trusts in the divine, you know? Using that keen sense to know that, you know, uh, there's something greater than me pushing my life forward. And with that, I'm gonna trust. With that, I'm gonna just trust and know that I'll be okay, all right? Now, depending on the type of stellium you have, you may resist this part of life. You may be someone that's like, mm, I don't want to have sex. I don't want to talk about the dark, deep, and the ugly. I don't want to talk about the secrets of life. I don't want to intimately bond with anyone. I am scared of those things. I don't like those things. You could hold a lot of secrets, right? I don't want to transform. I don't want to change. I like where I am. I don't want to do it, right? You could fall on that side of the territory too when you have that type of stellium, but you will find that you need to grow out of that. You need to resist and go in the other direction because when you do, 
when you are someone who is going in the other direction and trusting in the divine and letting life take its course and allowing it to change you into that caterpillar into a butterfly right and nine times out of ten the universe doesn't just do it with um, a rose right it kind of does it with a bat right it says no it's time for you to move it's time for you to go it's time for you to do this right and you may resist that having a stellium in the eighth house and unless you do that right unless you move unless you change you may find that other areas of your life don't progress forward right so try to apply that analogy to the other things in life as far as intimate bonds and sex and debts and taxes right unless you submit to these things then the other areas of your life won't move forward forward and that is all what you are here to kind of learn to do the ironic thing about Scorpio a lot of people don't know is that you will find power in submission sometimes the scorpionic energy naturally intuitively you may feel that it is in intuitive with Scorpio energy to hold on to control right um, but the secret of Scorpio is you gain power through submission you gain power through saying all right you know what universe if it is my time to move forward and progress, let's progress. And you will find that that is when you are able to find yourself in a better patch of grass. You are able to find yourself in a better standing in life. All right. Um, yeah. So this is also someone who is dibbling and dabbling within the mystical. With the, they're dibbling and dabbling within the psychological realms in life. They're dibbling and dabbling within the spiritual realms, okay? So if you are an astrologer, if you are a tarot reader, if you are a psychologist or a psychic or a sex worker, this is that type of energy for you, right? It's a lot of energy here that's being placed in this eighth house or in Scorpio for a reason so that it can give you the resources that you need from doing those things in order to survive in order to sustain yourself okay so let me know what your specific eighth house stellium is this is very strong and powerful energy in life all right use your power for good that's all I got to say use your power for good because you will have a lot of it and um use your ability to transform for your benefit okay you be okay with not being the same person you are today as you were last year or even who you were last week all right be on an endless quest of transformation of uh, an endless quest of you know metamorphizing <laughs> if that's a word no that is a word that's a word all right, so you have a beautiful, blessed day, and I will see you on the next video. Let me know what your unique stellium is in the comments below, and I will let you know what this could mean for you, all right? Have a good one. Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the ninth house or in Sagittarius. This is going to be energy that is being placed in your life around your belief systems in life you know around traveling mingling with different cultures getting beyond the rivers and the lakes that you are used to as i like to call it you know you seeing the world how do you connect to your eat pray love type of energy all right your higher education in life is going to bring a lot of importance in your life your relationship to your gurus your teachers you know your gurus and teachers are anyone that is trying to show and tell you something your relationship to your father is all going to be something that is placing a lot of importance of in your life within okay and unless you are focusing on these areas of your life you're going to find that a lot of the areas of your life do not take off or they do not progress in this life okay so i ask you are you someone that is placing importance or trying to cultivate what it is that you believe in you know what is your personal philosophy what is your relationship to spirituality and God and the universe what is your personal philosophy what is it do you believe in it and enough to take action within right because this is all how you form your relationship to abundance in life please 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 understand that abundance is a byproduct of belief okay abundance and being encouraged and progressing your life all starts with the mustard seed of belief okay and if you don't have anything that you believe in if you don't have anything that you stand by or you don't have anything that you um, call upon or that charges you up and motivates you to get out and go get it how can you go out and go get it you see so this is what the energy of 
in life, when you have a stellium in Sagittarius, when you have a stellium in the ninth house, is asking you to cultivate, asking you to place importance on, you know? It could also be asking you to place importance on your higher education, you know? This gives me very much the energy of someone who, even as a kid, someone has their dream college that they want to go to and or things of that nature and, and they're working hard from the ages of one years old all the way to 18 to get into said college, right? This is that type of energy. And then even when they're in college, there's so much energy to stay in college. This is that type of energy. But whenever you have a stellium in Sagittarius or in the ninth house, you are here to really master the energy of your belief systems, you know, of you being someone who sees the world, your, your relationship to your personal abundance, you being someone that also can dibble and dabble within you being someone who can publish or write or even teach okay you becoming the metaphorical guru in your own right you being someone who guides and shows others the wisdoms and the beliefs within you all right not just sitting at the feet of other people and soaking in the beliefs and the religions of the family and other people that you see on TV or the books that you read, but you being the propagator, you becoming a thought leader, you being someone that is a guru, you being someone that lets the world know, hey, this is what I know too. This is what I believe in too. And owning that and standing in your truth in that. What is your truth? When you have a stellium in the ninth or in Sagittarius, what is your truth? What is your truth that you are willing to fight for, that you are willing to get up in the morning and be fueled by, right? Because again, that is what is going to get you your abundance in life, okay? This is a very abundant placement and you will find nine times out of 10 when you have a stellium in the ninth or stellium in Sagittarius that the person will master this a little later in life, okay? Hopefully the person has a positive stellium or a stellium where they are able to work around or even you hearing this video, you close your laptop, you cut off your phone and say, okay, that's my sign, I'm going after it. But nine times out of 10, it will take the person kind of the first 30 years of life for them to say, you know what? Okay, now I'm ready. Now I'm ready with bravery and with abundance on my side, with faith and optimism on my side to go after and push my life forward, to go and get that abundance that I know I deserve, okay? Because it's gonna require faith. And sometimes this person may struggle with that, right? This person may struggle with themes of courage and abundance and optimism and what they personally believe in and what God is, or if there is a God, right? So I always say that the universe gives us nine planets, right? And if there are a bulk of planets within a certain energy or within a certain house, it shows that all the other houses are going to be lacking, right? A lot of the other houses are going to be kind of dependent on your focus within that ninth house or within that Sagittarius sign. And until you do those things, everything else in your life won't progress. It won't really move forward or it'll be a little bit more tricky or a little harder on you. So my biggest, biggest motivating to you is to get out there and go after the dream in your heart to really cultivate your belief systems. It could be whatever you believe in. I don't care if you believe in Tell it to, I don't care what you believe in, believe in something, okay? Believe in something enough to get you up out of the bed in the morning and with courage to go out and get yours, okay? Because that's what's gonna be important for you, all right? It really, really is. Also, cultivate your ph philosophical understanding of life. Cultivate your unique wisdoms. What are the things that you believe in this life, okay? So let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know what your specific stellium is, you know, what it consists of, what different asteroids and points and planets make up your stellium in your ninth house or in Sagittarius, and I will let you know what you could be experiencing and what the universe really wants from you, okay? So I, with that, am going to leave you. I'm going to be wishing and, and giving you all of the truth-seeking energy. I want you to cultivate your belief systems. I want you to get out there with bravery, with optimism, with faith, faith and with some gumption to get out and go get what's yours. Do not be afraid. Do not be scared. Know that something bigger is around you and it requires your belief first, okay? Your belief is that spark that will get you whatever you need, all right? You have a blessed day. Bye. If you have a stellium in the 10th house or in Capricorn, this is going to be the energy of success, all right? There's going to be a lot of energy within your professional environment and what it is 
that you have the dream on your heart around your legacy and your professional life. All right. This gives me very much energy of the company man or the CEO, someone who's leading the organization, someone who's starting their own business or needs to start their own business, someone who needs authoritative positions in life. That is what is meant for you. Someone who is needing with that stellium in Capricorn and stellium in 10th house who is going to need to place importance on those things in life. You're going to have to be someone that takes those things seriously and puts themselves out there for that. You're going to have to work hard. You're going to have to be someone that's diligent. You're going to have to be someone who's consistent, who's persistent, and who is the one for the job. Hey, I'm the one for the job. Hire me. What's up? I can do it. I'm the one, right? That is the energy that you're going to have to place importance on, all right? And nine times out of ten, you will find that this energy puts a lot of pressure on you from the ages of one to thirty. You could be someone that you know, earlier in life, because there's so much energy in Capricorn, you could be somewhat of the late bloomer, or you could be someone that feels like it's all about work. It's all about success. While kids are outside playing, you're at home trying to get into college, doing your homework, you know? Kids knocking on your door as a kid, you're like, I ain't going outside playing. I'm trying to get ready for the SAT. Like, it could be that type of energy. And you will find, though, that because there's so much energy within Capricorn or within the 10th house, that it doesn't really leave a lot of room for play. It doesn't leave a lot of room for relaxation. It doesn't leave a lot of room for enjoyment, right, or personal life. But you may find that uh, as you approach 30, and once you do get that pinnacle of success that you are quite destined for, that you will then have a, a moment of pressure being relieved, you know, being like, okay, finally, okay, I got my success, I got my bag, I got my money, I got my top spot, I'm doing it, now I can go out and date, now I can go out and have fun, now I can go out with the boys, now I can go out with the girls, now I can breathe. And you may actually find that when you have a stellium in Capricorn that you age backwards, right? Like, like I said, as a kid, Kids knocking on your door, you're like, I ain't going outside, I'm working on this, I'm working on that. But as you get older, you may feel younger. You may feel like, okay, I do want to go out more. I do want to have fun. I do want to date. I do want to, you know, be carefree and whatever. But I think what it is is that the universe is saying, I want you to do your work first. I want you to get the bag first. I want you to establish yourself within the professional world and the professional environment. And once you do that, then you can go out and play. Then you can go out and have fun, okay? So that is what is happening for you when you have a stellium in Capricorn or the stellium in uh, the 10th house. It's gonna feel like a lot of pressure. It's gonna feel like a lot of work. It's gonna feel like a lot of energy, but do know that if you stick with it and you really do put yourself out there within the professional world and the professional environment, you are someone out of anyone who is meant for great success in this life. You are meant for the pinnacle of success, okay? And to leave a legacy, you know, to set your children up for generational wealth. It, this is quite possible for you, all right? But it's gonna require your hard work, it's gonna require your efforts, and it's gonna require your bravery to step up and say, like I said in the beginning of the video, I'm the one for the job, I can do this. What, what do you need me to do? I can do it, all right? So with that being said, let me know if this resonates with you. Also, let me know in the comments below what your specific um, stellium is doing, you know, what it consists of, what is inside of your stellium, what is it made up of, you know, because depending on what you tell me will change and alter some of the analysis a little bit and it will be better able for me to direct you in the proper direction of what the universe is asking of you and what it wants you to specifically place importance on in this life, all right? So with that being said, I am wishing you all of the ambitious energy. I am wishing you all of the professional, you know, go-getter type of energy, the CEO type of energy, the enterprising energy um, to put yourself out there within the professional light and the professional realm and great success upon you, all right? You have a beautiful blessed day and I will see you on the next video, all right? Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in the 11th house or in Aquarius. This is going to put a lot of importance and a lot of energy within the place of your life, of your future dreams, goals, and wishes in life. You know, you may be someone who has that 30 year, 20 year, 50 year plan and you're only 10 years old, right? This is also going to be um, the energy within your life of cultivating what your future dreams, goals, and wishes are in your life 
if you have a different type of stellium, you know? This is also gonna place a lot of importance on the organizations, the the groups that you are around, you know, the the affiliations you sign up for, you know, what it is the the group, the organizations, the company that you fit into that that share common goals, common dreams, common missions that you have for your personal life. And for you, when you have this stellium in the 11th house or in, or in Aquarius, it will be your life's mission to figure out what those things mean for you and what groups are meant for you. And if you are even meant for groups or, you know, you dealing with friends and dealing with groups of people is going to be something that you need to take importance of. It's going to be you and the group, you and others. You know, where do I fit in? Am I a part of that group? Do I fit into that niche? Am I a part of that organization? Or do I need to lead an organization of my own? Do I need to be someone that starts my own initiative, my own community where people follow me and we all have a common theme? Because you may find at times when it comes to your friends, when it comes to the organizations that you are a part of, depending on the type of stellium that you have, there will be a lot of drama there. There will be a lot of action and a lot of activity there, whether for good or for bad, there's a lot of energy and a lot of attention there. You know, a lot of CEOs have this placement, right? Because they are someone who has to lead an entire organization or an entire group and be the talking head of this organization of what we believe in, what our ethos is, what our our mission is within this organization, right? So there's a lot of drama there. There's a lot of activity there. Um, but then on the opposite side of the coin, right? These are the people who may need to find out how it is they are going to get that role, how it is they are going to uh, start something or invent something where other people can follow them on it, right? You would be someone who would be very, very good with technology, with inventing something, with uh, your, what is it, your humanitarian efforts, the internet, social media, you being someone that also, like I said, doing something within a big organization or dealing with big organizations is something that could be good for you. Um, but do know that you out of anyone can get your future dreams, goals, and wishes to come true, but it's gonna be in what you do for the collective, what you do for the organization, what you do for the society, what you do for the communities that you are a part of or that you pander to, all right? It's gonna be, it, yeah, this is what it's gonna be, all right? And also, in you, owning your uniqueness, okay? When you have a stellium in Aquarius, it all starts with you looking in the mirror and saying, I am a unique individual. Now, do I wanna give this uniqueness to an organization? right? And we can have a mutual benefit, only if it's mutually beneficial, or do I want to take my uniqueness and be the leader of my own organization so that I can get my future dreams, goals, and wishes to come true? That will be the balance that you need to weigh and what you will need to personally figure out, all right? And now, depending on the type of stellium that you have, I may be able to better direct you in what that is for you, but I will need that information in the comments below, okay? So let me know what your specific stellium in your Aquarius or in 11th house is doing and saying, all right? What does it consist of? What specific points, planets, and asteroids make up your stellium in Aquarius or in the 11th house? And I will be better able to let you know what the universe wants from you, what it is saying, what it wants you to place importance on. Because I do know that whenever you have a stellium anywhere in the chart, when you have it in the 11th house, anywhere, right? But for you, you're going to find that because this stellium is in the 11th house, a lot of your life, a lot of the abundance of your life is going to be locked up until you focus on that area of your life, until you figure out who your friends are, until you figure out you know, your unique position, your unique niche in life, what your mission in life is, what your humanitarian goals are, what organization you are a part of, or simply you being someone that is going after your future dreams, goals, and wishes, you're gonna find that the other areas of your life will not progress forward. And you may find that the abundance of your life actually takes off in the later half of your life. You know, you may be someone that with this stellium in the 11th house, that your second half of life is so much more abundant than the first half of life, all right? Because the first half of life, you're gonna have to be working towards that abundance, right? So let me know what that is for you. Let me know if you resonate. I am sending you all of the Aquarian energy possible. I am wishing you your most unique self. I'm asking that you go out and get what's yours. 
be someone that doesn't compromise your uniqueness in this life and really be authentic. Be as, a, as authentic as you can be because it'll be in your authenticity that you find the groups that are meant for you, that you find the friends that are meant for you, that you own your unique mission in this life and that then you are able to, with that, have a better direction of where your future dreams, goals, wishes, and wealth is in your life, all right? You have a beautiful blessed day and I will see you on the next video. Bye. Let's say you have a stellium in Pisces or in the the 12th house. This is going to be very, very mysterious and mystical and introspective and psychological spiritual energy, okay? Uh, this is going to be the energy of those who may isolate themselves a lot, all right? These may be the people that keeps a lot to themselves or may go through a lot of mental health issues or needs to take their mental health and their spiritual health very seriously, okay? You're gonna be someone that uh, may also have isolative tendencies or you are figuring out how to make your isolation work for you, right? Or what's going on in your mind work for you right what your connection to source and spirit is for you you may be well served with this stellium in the 12th house by moving outside of the birthplace okay because you will find that while you are in your birthplace a lot of things are locked up for you okay love is locked up success is locked up you know your prosperity is locked up because this energy will translate to introspection it will translate to you being in your room doing your own thing finding peace, working things out in your mind. Whereas when you travel, this energy will open up for you. You will be able to tangibly, you know, benefit from the results of Venus or benefit from the results of Jupiter, benefit from the tangible results of Saturn. You'll be able to feel it, see it, touch it, experience it. Whereas when you have a stellium in the 12th, if you stick close to home, it turns introspective. It turns to things that happen and, and kind of harbor within the mind and within the psyche. Right? You can't really touch what's going on within the psyche. You can't really hold what's going on in the psyche, you know? So I would highly recommend the remedy to this is to, you know, number one, definitely seek out therapy, definitely mind your mental health and your psychological health. But also what would really, really help you is seeing the world, getting out of the birthplace, you know, doing something where you are leaving the nest so to speak, all right? You should not, 550 to 500 miles or further, right? The further you go with this stellium in the 12th house shows the more prosperity and abundance that you will have in a foreign land, all right? Foreign land is just fancy astrologers speak for anywhere outside of the birthplace, but do know that the further you go with this stellium, the more success and abundance you will reap in this life, okay? So um, this is very, okay, so also, this is very spiritual energy. This is highly healing and creative energy, okay? This is, these are my Reiki healers. These are my singers. These are my uh, therapists. These are my psychologists. These are my astrologers. You know, these are my, uh, I don't know if I said already, but, but my Reiki healers, my tarot card readers. You know, these are those people when you have a stellium in the 12th house. Or very simply put, you're highly spiritual. But be careful because that highly spiritual energy can keep you reclused. Does that make sense? That highly spiritual energy can keep you to yourself where you aren't really, the only abundance that you are getting out of that energy is being spiritually aware and connected. Whereas if you use that energy, right, or get beyond the isolation aspect of things, you are able to reap more abundance. You are able to see it, feel it, hear it, touch it in other areas of your life outside of just being spiritually connected, you see? So let me know if this resonates with you. Let me know if you are highly connected, highly psychic, highly spiritual, you know? Let me know if you have isolated tendencies, if you are highly creative on your own, if you love doing your own thing, you love your own, space you just like doing your own thing off to you know in a mysterious little corner somewhere doing your thing with the door closed let me know if that's you and also let me know what your specific stellium is consisting of let me know what it's made up of you know what different types of planets and points and asteroids make up your specific stellium because that can change the flavor and the dynamic of what you'll be experiencing with this stellium in the 12th house or in Pisces all right um, but with that I'm going to leave you and I'm going to wish you all the spiritual creative healing energy all the psychic energy um, and 
hopefully a little bit of the courage to get out and see the world because that is really where your abundance will be, all right? Getting out of the nest in which you grew up in because that is gonna give you a little bit more positive energy and abundance than just within your spiritual connection, okay? So you have a beautiful blessed day and I will see you on the next video, bye.